everybody, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a wind restrictor on a C6 Corvette Coupe. So guys, before we get started installing this wind restrictor in the car today, let me tell you a little bit about wind restrictor. Wind Restrictor is a U.S. based company. They're based out of Dallas, Texas, and they do all of their manufacturing, their design, and their shipping from Dallas. So you're going to get a good quality product. They also offer a lifetime guarantee on their product. The only thing that they ask of you is that you use the provided cleaner that, they, that they've supplied with you in the, in the kit to be able to clean it. It's called Brilliantize. They even supply the little rag to be able to wipe it off. You don't want to use Windex on this because Windex will actually scratch it and that will avoid your warranty. So be sure and use this. If you run out, you can get this at, at Walmart. That's not a big deal. Okay. Now, as you can see here, this is a Corvette one. But they not only make them for Corvette. They make them for Mustang. They make them for all different types of Fords, Chevrolets. You know, they do Camaro, they, they do Mercedes, they do Dodges, so they have a lot of different ones. And they have other things besides the, the wind restrictors themselves. They make them for the coupes and the convertibles, of course, but also, I believe also for the C6, they make illuminated uh, wind, uh, door sills. Um, so they have different things, and um, you know, you should just check out their website. And so if you've got multiple different types of cars, you can be able to put one of these in every one of them. So the Corvette channel is sponsored by Wind Restrictor, and in doing so, Wind Restrictor has authorized me to be able to give you guys a 10% off discount by using the Corvette channel as the code. Now you need to do that on the website, or you can call in, but you have to make sure that you use the code Corvette channel, otherwise you're not going to get that 10% discount. Now this discount applies not just to Corvette, it applies to every car that they have, So, and they have piles of them. There's, there's Dodge, there's Mercedes, there's Ford, there's uh, you name it, they've got it. So check out their website and they'll be able to do something for you. They also do custom ones also. Um, I'm going to try to get a picture, pop it up on the screen here so you can see one of the one I did in my Corvette, but you can do you can do plenty of them and they don't charge very much to be able to do a custom one. So it's very cool if you've got a good quality picture that you'd like to be able to have, have uh, transformed into something on, on there, they'll be able to take care of it. So um, hopefully you like what you saw and uh, like I said, reach out to them, they'll give you the discount. We're going to hit the on button on the remote and it comes on. Now we can go and we can change the color literally by just running our finger around the circle to get all of the different colors. Today we're going to be installing a wind restrictor on a C6 Corvette. Now this model happens to be one that has the, uh, the multi-light LED controller system. Um, you may have elected to do it that way or you may have elected to just do it with the single or the double wire just single light version. Uh, the installation of the uh, light itself or the wind restrictor itself is exactly the same so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I will talk about uh, talk to the, the point of what changes between the two wire and the four wire and there's not a whole heck of a lot. As a matter of fact on the C6 you can actually it, you can do it with the two wires so you can almost make it look like a, it comes on with the brake lights if you want um, or stay solid with your running lights and um, so you have a couple different options in there. The instructions will tell you exactly which color uh, wire to attach to but I'll be showing you that in the video. Um, everything here is uh, you know we've got the uh, the controller itself it comes in the box here has the controller and the remote control and then if you've elected to use the get the battery, uh, this has a rechargeable battery pack. And we're going to be showing you how to wire that in also. This is also, like I said, it is an additional piece if you decide to do it. Uh, it's great for being able to do car shows and that types of things. So you can have your, your wind restrictor lit up and running uh, when, you're, when your car is off and you're not draining your battery. But if you're doing any car shows that you want to show it off, 
this is perfect for that and it's very reasonable in price. Um, and then it has all of the cables that you're going to need. Um, if, you, if you do elect to do the, the battery, you'll need to let them know that, that you're going to do a quick disconnect. If you're going to do it one way or the other, then you don't need it. But if you're going to do both where you can leave everything hooked up to the car and run it normally and then also be able to switch over to the battery when you want to, you'll want to let them know that you need the additional wiring kit. And I think the wiring kit's only like, I don't know, seven, eight dollars, something like that. So be sure when you're ordering to be asked for that. So the kit comes with the two brackets as well as two self-tapping screws. And I'll be showing you how that's done here in just a minute. Okay, it comes with the, uh, uh, with the two taps that you're gonna need to be able to tap into your positive and negative wires as well as um, the template that you're gonna need to be able to center the restrictor onto the car so that you can get your brackets exactly where they go. And they've got some stick tape here and I'm gonna describe all of this to you, uh, explain it all to you in the video. Um, and then you will need to be able to have a hair dryer uh, to be able to activate, once you pull the tape off of here, you're going to want to activate this uh, the sticky. It's a, it's a heat sensitive uh, uh, mounting tape. So if you heat that up for you know 10 seconds or so with the um, with the hair dryer or a heat gun, um, then it'll make sure that it sticks really well. And the self tapping screw actually locks it into the halo where it actually is going to go. Just for sake of saving a little bit of time for the video and not to bore you guys to death on doing all this, I've gone ahead and I've pulled the back part of the trunk out, which is normally sits in like that in the trunk. And so you're looking at what would be the inside. There's some hooks here, they're just press in, they'll actually unscrew, they hold the net that normally would go here. And there's also two push pins that are right here. So these, are, these ones I wanted to point out because they are hard to find. So, you, you know, it's, everything's dark, it'll be hard to see those. Um, if, you need to, if you need help pulling those out, if you have a, a pry tool, nylon pry tool, that'll help you be able to pull those loose. And, um, and then, like I said, the two other ones are over on this side here. Um, and then you don't have to pull both sides off. Uh, the two little side lights will just disconnect. You don't have to completely pull it out, but it does make it a little bit easier. So you guys can make that decision. You'll see where I'm going to be putting the, uh, the controller, so it will make it a little bit easier. You're not going to be fighting so many things if you just take the time to pull this out. Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way here. And now, what I, the other thing I want to point out is, if you notice here, I have some blue tape right here. Okay, now, again, for sake of time, we went ahead and we marked the center point on up on the halo there. Okay, now some of the cars. This is, happens to be a 2005, and it did not have the little notch. You'll see that in the instructions. It talks about a little notch. On some of the versions of the C6 and the C5, they have that little notch, and you'll, it'll make it very very easy to just line your template up right to the notch. And if you can see that. You'll have one of these templates in your kit. You'll see the little notch in that template. So there will be a notch that looks just like that one that's actually right here by where that tape is at. But on this car, it didn't have it. So in order to save time, we went ahead and we found center and, and then we marked it. So when I go to do, put this on, I'm just going to be, be able to go right up to the tape. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the video. Um, you, the other thing that I want to point out is that you want to make sure that, just to make it easier, you don't have to do any of this, but it's much easier to do. Push your seats all the way as far as they'll go. Fold them forward as far as they'll go. Open your doors and take your roof off, okay? When you do all that, you've got a lot more room to get in there because you're going to have to get in from the back side to be able to put these, these uh, brackets in. So it'll just make it so much easier. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go ahead and jump into the video now, and we'll show you how, to, how it's done. I'm back here in the back of the car. Now you can see why I told you that you want to make sure that you move the seats forward, because you have to climb in here like this. So the template itself actually has, the, uh, has some sticky tape here. So you're just going to take the sticky tape loose, and hopefully this will come up real nice and easy for me. Okay. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to kind of climb over here so I can see a little bit. And I'm going to get this right here like this. So you can see my edge of my tape or my center point is lined up right with the slot. Okay. And then I'm going to stick that on there like that. So it holds it in place. So now that we've got our, our template on, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wipe this down with alcohol. Just going to wipe this area down. Okay. So now once, once we do that, I've gone ahead and I've pulled the stickies off of the, the uh, brackets already, as you can see. So they're pretty much ready to go. All I've got to do is heat those up here in just a second. But we've got a adhesive promoter, okay, and we're going to use this to go right over this area here to help make sure that this tape is going to stick so this isn't going to fall. So um, when you do this, you're, gonna, you're just going to press here right where this black black spot is. And when you do that, it's gonna, you're gonna, it sounds like you're breaking glass, okay? And then you're just gonna shake it around a little bit for a second. That's gonna get it down into the, um, into the filament right here, okay? And then you can just bring here like that. You just basically paint it on. Okay. So now, while that's drying, I'm going to grab my hair dryer and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat my brackets up, okay? So this bracket here is going to go right over here where this edge is actually touching this edge of the template, okay? So we're going to go ahead and turn the, going to heat this up real quick, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this over here. And then you want to press and hold it for about 30 seconds or so. And that'll that'll get it where it'll hold. Now we also have, like I said, the other secret weapon to this is, this is the uh, the new and improved version of this. The um, They actually have this screw that's actually going up into the halo here, and we'll, we'll be screwing those in here in just a minute. But this way, this is not gonna fall. Now those of you that are going, oh man, I just ha I gotta screw a screw into this bracket. Um, it's not really a big deal. You're putting one little black self-tapping screw into there. If you had decided that you were, you're going to take this out um, and move it to another car or sell it or whatever you decide to do, you can always just get a little black, um, black plastic rivet and you can just put it in there and that will take care of that problem. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put this one down. like so, and then we're going to hold it. Now that we've got our brackets uh, mounted here, and now comes time that we have to put our only holes in the car, which is our two self-tapping screws. So those are right here in these brackets, and we're just going to screw those little guys up in there, like so. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and we can pull this little guy off. Okay, and then we can go ahead and take our, our spin nuts here and our backing plate. And we can go ahead and we can hang our restrictor. Now that we've got the restrictor hanging off of the screws here, it's time to put the backing plate and the nut on. So what you're going to notice is that the plate will only go on one way and so you want the shorter side to the top otherwise it's not going to hook on okay so you're just going to put that up there like so just like that and you're good to go so now that we've got the restrictor in place now we're going to go ahead and we're going to route this wire. So you want to make sure that it goes around the, the shock tower here. And you're just going to go ahead and basically you're just tucking it down into this plastic. Okay, just like that. 
just getting it tucked away and out of the way. So once you get that down here like that, you can now just tuck this right underneath between the carpet and the rubber underneath. It's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to see it. Okay, and it comes all the way over and it's going to wrap around the carpet over to here like so. Okay, so now we've got plenty of wire here and all we have to do is we're now going to take, we're going to strip these wires back, we're going to connect them to the controller. Now while I'm, while I'm doing this part of it, if you, if you have the, just the two wire single, single color system, then you would just be taking, you'd have two wires that are going, um, that you are pulling from here, and you would just be connecting them to the wires here in the back, which I'm going to be showing how to connect here in just a second. So you would be pretty much done because you would not be connecting a controller. Okay, so now we've got all four of our colors done here. And now at this point, we've got, we've got a, a controller cable. Now again, like I was saying, if you have the single, single wire or the single light control, um, then you would be only utilizing the two wires that are coming off of here and going right up into the car, okay? In this case, we're actually setting this controller up so we can actually run off of the car and off of a, the battery pack. So this involves a little bit more wiring. So this has a um, has a, a pigtail here that's made to be able to go to the controller, and then it has a couple different connectors. This one that actually has an end on it. This will actually go to the car and this one will actually be able to go to the battery. Both of them will end up giving us multi-plugs here that will plug into this like so. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna wire this little guy up here. So at that point, I can go ahead and I can strip this back. And now we've got our two wires here. Okay, and then on this plug, Red is positive and black is negative. All right. So now we're connected to the controller. Okay. So now the only thing that we have left to do is we've just got to connect our two wires here that are going to be feeding the controller with these two cables here. Okay. So on, once you've pulled this part, and I showed you this in the very beginning, I pulled the back part of the trunk out so I could have access to this whole area back in here. And there's two wires that you're going to, you can actually do it two different ways. You can make this so this would become a stoplight, so when you hit your brakes, it'll light up. Um, and you can look at the instructions. I think it's the yellow wire, but don't hold me to that. Um, but the instructions show which one you can grab. The brown wire is the one that we're going to connect to, so it can come on when the headlights and the running lights are on. So what we're going to do for the, the ground wire is that you could obtain a wire by searching through the harness here and get one, but the easier, safer way of doing it is to go ahead and just get yourself a self-tapping screw on your, on your negative wire here and put it up to, uh, up to this metal here for the trunk assembly and just go ahead and drill your screw into it. And then we're going to come over here to the, the wiring harness that goes to the taillights, which again, the instructions explain to you that you're going to have to go ahead and pull a little bit of the black tape off of it. And that's okay. Just be careful. Um, you can use a razor knife or something of that nature, but just don't go in there hacking. You just want to you know, just ever so, ever so slightly just cut the plastic open or the what looks like black, black duct tape or electrical tape I should say and that will that will get you into the into the harness then you're going to be looking for the brown wire so we've got our wire tap here on our brown wire we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our red wire into the tap okay 
just like so. Alright, so we've got our, our two taps done. So we should have power here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this in. It's like so. And then Dave's going to go ahead and he's going to turn on the, the uh, light switch. We're going to see if we've got power. And there we go. Now that we've got our connection done and we had tested it and it came out to work fine, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to tape this connection up here because I don't want I don't want these to just be laying in there uh, exposed. Now at this point what we can do here, I'm going to take some, some two-sided stick tape. And again, you don't have to. I don't think, I think the where it's going, I don't think it's really going to move around. But I'm just putting it on just again more so for myself that I'm putting it in there and it's it's going to be be stuck to where it belongs. So now at this point all we're doing here is we're just going to go ahead and gonna tuck this in like so and we're going to put it right up on the firewall around the wall right there. You can see right there. Just going to hold it right there in place. Make sure it sticks. Okay, you can see that. And at that point, we're just going to let the carpet go back. And it being pressed in there like that, it's not going anywhere. You can see here, we're all we've got to do, we're just going to be tucking this back in. We're going to plug the, the light in. Like that. That's going to go in like so. Tuck that around that carpet. Like that, and you can see the little screws here coming back out. Everything's where it belongs, and the door will close nice and neat. So we're good. Now these are the ones that we actually took off before we started filming to save a little bit of time. But these just go on; they just go right through the hole here. The top one is a, you know, so there's a um, one that has a clip on it, like so. That one's going to go at the top and you can press or you can just start to press it in and then turn it to get it where you want it. The other one, again, you can just press it right in. These two here, these little guys, they are the ones that go right here up at the top. Those just go right here like so. Just like that. And then Dave's gonna push that one in on that side over there. At that point we're pretty well tucked in. It's all connected. It's connected up inside the inside here like so. So at that point we're good to go. Then the only other option is when we decide that we're going to use the battery and then we would just take this one plug loose, we plug the battery in and we flip the switch and now our restrictor works. Okay. So at this point you can elect it comes with the velcro on it so you can elect to do it a couple different ways. Um, I mean, you could put it here on the top of the battery. Um, I think if you take this Velcro piece off, you can make it actually stick right to it like that. Makes it where it's right on top of everything. Um, or you could pull everything out of the carpeted area and you could put it down inside. So that's all we're gonna do. We'll, uh, we'll just tuck these wires back up in there so we only need so, so much wire to be exposed and then we're good. Okay guys, what you can see here is that this is pretty much the finished product, all right? Um, the wires are going up inside here, okay? And now I can just close the lid, just like that. Lift it up here, battery's right here. I can have the, you know, flip the switch. There you go, it's on and off. Then I also have the plug for the car. So I just unplug this little guy out here, plug this into here, and now it's running off of the car. Very simple, very easy, um, and uh, the, you know this way you're going to be able to to uh, run it for car shows and that type of stuff, and you don't you're not going to be pulling any power from the car. So at this point we are completely done. 
and uh, we know it works. We're going to go ahead and run it through its paces here in just a second, and we'll show you that. We're going to hit the on button on the remote and it comes on. Now we can go and we can change the color literally by just running our finger around the circle to get all of the different colors. You notice that there? Okay. Now while I'm doing that, that puts it into a static mode so it's always going to stay just that particular color, whatever I pick. Okay. If you want to put it into one of the pre-programmed modes, which the remote comes with a whole bunch of different programs, and you can access them by using these bottom or the, the two center buttons. Okay, so I'm just going through different ones. They will start to cycle. They'll you have a strobe, you've got a flash blink, you've got different color changes just by picking on something different. I'm just pushing buttons now at this point, but you'll see that it'll start to change, it'll start to flash. There we go. Take a look at that. That's just one of many different modes you can do. And then this is on the brightest mode. You can actually dim this down. So it's not as bright. Okay. Or bring it back up. The other cool thing about this is that once you set this up, you put this up on all the settings, and you shut the key off, you shut your, you shut your lights off, the controller is going to remember exactly where it was. So uh, very, very simple to operate. It's a, it's a very cool remote, so I'm sure you're going to like it. Wind Restrictor has authorized me to be able to give you guys a 10% off discount by using the Corvette channel as the code. Now you need to do that on the website or you can call in, but you have to make sure that you use the code Corvette channel, otherwise you're not going to get that 10% discount. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. And thank you for watching, and you guys have a great night.